In this video, I'll detail the two-pack Rayman system my wife and I will rely on should we have to abandon our home and run. In keeping with my commitment to you, I do a lot of homework and plan these projects carefully so you have the best possible starting point for your own projects. If I do my job, the video will both validate and refute some of your beliefs and perhaps present new ideas you've never considered. As always, I'll be as brief as possible, but this video has a lot to cover so I apologize for the length. For your patience, I've included two surprises. First, why these desert bags include some scuba gear. Second, a shot near the end that's so cute your wife will love it. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and enjoy. I think these packs are better planned and a much better choice than our original, more tactical looking bug out bags. In the next few minutes, I'll detail some important planning principles that make them so. When I released the original bug out bag video, I asked for your advice and did I get a lot of great ideas. Some of the most well-considered and critical advice addresses the bag's weight. At just under 40 pounds, the original bag is close to 20% of my body weight, falling within the 1 6th to 1 3rd range many backpacking experts recommend. However, my wife and I are more representative of the demographic of our viewers, 45 to 65, and I think the experts probably represent a younger crowd. For these bags, I set a strict weight budget of 15% of each of our body weights. I also got a lot of suggestions for things that people really think are important, ranging from the brilliant to the fanciful. But every comment gave me reason to think, which has been much appreciated. I took your advice to heart, did more homework and planning, and this is the result. For the Gray Man version, we had four key considerations. First, the bag had to do the job, keep us alive and healthy for 72 hours in our local environment, without outside support, save additional water should we be in the five-month summer season, where daytime temps will be above 100 Fahrenheit or 38 Celsius. We live on the edge of the city and have both urban and wilderness environments within a mile of our home. In the summer season, water is near non-existent in the desert, so we'll likely have to be scrounged in the city, unless we're lucky enough to have a monsoon rain. Second, the bags had to be light enough for us to manage over multi-mile distances and allow us to move quickly if necessary. We budgeted 15% of our body weight, and this tyrannical limit made planning difficult, but really made the bags a success in the end. I weighed and recorded every item, and this was a great help in the agonizing choices of what did and did not make the cut. I also recorded the calorie content of every food item and planned both the energy and sodium contributions that will be important for sustaining energy and replacing salt that will be lost to sweat. Third, the bags my wife and I carry will work together, splitting the inventory of what we'll need, but in such a way that each bag is reasonably self-sufficient. Should we be separated or need to abandon one of them, each has what we'll need to survive. Finally, in keeping with the Gray Man concept, the bag should not call unwelcome attention. So let's get to the bags. Both bags are 511 Covert 18 models that appear much like those you'd see on a campus or around town. To reduce notice, we chose two different color schemes so they don't match. The bags have excellent mesh padding that helps keep your back cool and adds comfort. I've added waist belts that transfer weight to our hips and keep the packs from bouncing. Both packs are equipped with Camelback water bladders, 3 liters for my bag and 2 liters for my wife's. On the exterior are gloves and a washcloth, and my bag is equipped with two 1-liter bottles of water, one of which is stainless steel so it can be used for boiling water we scrounge. The first aid kit moves to my belt and will likely clip our radios to the loops on the pack straps. The radios are inexpensive dual-band ham radios for which we're licensed. For people who aren't licensed, a good alternative are Midland FRS radios that need no license, have weather band, and can also operate on the higher power GMRS band if you register online with the FCC. A GMRS license is around $80 for five years and covers all the radios for your group. I recommend you get the license and learn good radio etiquette so you can practice and also use the GMRS channels for travel or events. The K-Bar knives are short models with full-length half tangs and Kydex shears. We'll wear them in the wild or likely put them in the packs or conceal them for urban travel. On the back of each sheath are two sail needles secured with duct tape. We can use the interior strands from the 550 cord should we need to make clothing or equipment repairs. The pepper spray could clip on the pack straps or be carried in a pocket. Both my wife and I are extensively trained, qualified, and permitted for other defense options, but I'll skip detailing that equipment in this video. We'll pocket the whistle so the bright color doesn't draw notice. My EDC includes a quality automatic watch that's self-winding so needs no battery and is waterproof. Also there's a waterproof butane lighter, an excellent Kershaw scrambler folding knife, a Leatherman Sidekick multi-tool, a Streamlight flashlight that runs on a single AAA battery, and an Exotech fire rod. My wife carries a Leatherman Wingman multi-tool. A viewer commented on my lack of a multi-tool in the last video, so I did a lot of homework in selecting the best ones, and I'll cover the evaluation selection process in another video. 
The bags are carefully planned for fast access to things that may be quickly needed when traveling, and the contents are grouped logically. The main compartment is accessed only when stopping to cook or camp, excepting that we take advantage of the very top space behind the zipper for storing the shemogs for quick access. The pack compartments are loaded by function, so everything needed at one time is kept together, and we know exactly where to find it. This planning will minimize repacking time and leave us less vulnerable to having to abandon unpacked supplies if we're surprised while stopped. As I mentioned before, the bags are organized to be mutually supporting while each having enough kit to be used independently. In the very top compartments are our monoculars, glasses, and headlamps. Next down is the hygiene compartment. It contains toilet paper, wipes, disposable toothbrushes, 50 SPF sunblock, sanitizer, and coin towels. The coin towels can be dropped in a cap full of water to make an instant disposable wipe and after drying are a good fire starter. My wife's bag also has a pea style unit so she need not be pants down any more than I am. That's about as much explanation as I want to give, but you can get more on Google. There's also a pack of aspirins here to remind me to advise you to pack a week of your daily medications. Also shown here is my wife's girl stuff kit from the main compartment. She had a one pound budget, that's weight, not currency, for the kind of things from the travel section at Walmart that she can't be without. Below the hygiene compartment on the right side of my wife's pack is a small compartment that has a boo-boo kit for minor first aid. While I'll carry a much more robust first aid kit on my belt, the boo-boo kit gives her the basics if we're separated. The kit has latex gloves, a quick clot sponge, salt tablets, blister pads, antiseptic wipes, insect sting pads, butterfly closures, band-aids, a compression wrap, antiseptic ointment, and wound seal clotting powder. There are also single doses of antihistamine, anti-diarrhea, and pain meds. There's a separate video that details the big first aid kit that I'll carry. At just two pounds, it can cover much more serious injuries. I've left a link to the video in the description below. In the corresponding compartment in my pack, I carry a plastic poncho that I can wear over myself and the pack if it rains. There's another small compartment on the left side where we keep what we need for water, signaling, and communications. There are coffee filters for keeping out larger particles and purification tablets that we can put in the containers while the water sloshes around. Then signal mirrors and earphone microphone combos so we can use the radios quietly. I carry a Silcock key, the missing handle for the faucets on restaurants and commercial buildings, which may be a good source for potable water. You really can't do urban survival without one of these. There's an excellent video on it in the Using Survival Tools playlist on my channel. Meanwhile, my wife has a stand-up water bag that can be filled and carried in the bottle pocket on the outside of her bag. We both also carry a piece of scuba gear, glow tube dive lights that can attach to the back of the pack so we can be seen on the road at night or so we can find each other in the dark or one can be left behind to provide a reliable way to find our way back to camp on a dark night. They have a high, low, and flash function and run 4 to 15 hours on a single AAA battery. The rear compartment has our non-cooked food, life straws, and maps. Besides the jerky, there are Cliff Energy Bars and GU Energy Gels. Between the three of them, good sources of carbs, protein, electrolytes, and caffeine. We'll have ready access to food that replaces sweat and provides energy as we're traveling. It's also where I keep my topo map for the wilderness and a city street map. Plus, we have drink mix to add electrolytes and make poor water taste a little better. The main compartment has the things that we'll need when we stop. Shelter, fire, cooking and eating equipment, cookable food, lighting, clothing, sleeping, and repair items. The two inside pockets have hot food in one, fire kits and miscellaneous items in the other. My main compartment has a shemog at the top for ready access, a tarp, foil, stove and pot, sleep sack, large nylon ties, 60 feet of 550 paracord, towel and soap, change of clothes, cooking spoon and fork, light sticks, and a bivy. My wife's main compartment has her girl stuff kit, a poncho, shemog, change of clothes, light sticks, 50 feet of number 36 bank line, sleep sack, esbit stove and tablets, and a stainless cup. We both have what's needed to independently collect and purify water and create fire and shelter. Here's a very cool trick that I got from Creek Stewart. Set out a shirt, underwear, socks as shown here. Fold in the sides and then place your heavy socks as shown. Then roll it all from the top to bottom and pull the sock ends over the roll. Now you have a change of clothes that can fit in a compact space and makes a great travel pillow. The hot food pocket has four serving meal packs, coffee kits with instant coffee, sugar, creamer, salt and pepper, beef bouillon cubes, which are good for salt, and an extra salt bag for spicing scrounged foods should we go beyond our food supply and for heat injuries, eating tools, and can openers. The miscellaneous items pocket has our fire kits, spare radio batteries, nylon ties, spare batteries for all our devices, $100 cash, button compass, and small entertainment items. 
The batteries are AA and AAA sizes to cover all our devices and are lithium because that type has the longest shelf life, the longest run time, and the lowest weight. In addition, my pack has duct tape, insect repellent, a knot guide, knife sharpener, and our important documents scanned on a flash drive. There were a lot of comments suggesting a power bank to charge phones, but it simply didn't make the cut. If we bail, we'll simply turn off the phones to save power and use them for the reference materials on them, not for communications. We do have the radios. You've probably noticed the zip bags used throughout the video. Some time ago, I ordered 100 packs of heavy-duty 4 mil zipper bags in a variety of small sizes. They're extremely useful for organizing and protecting small items for this, for travel, and for countless other uses. Here, they not only keep things together, they help prevent loose items from falling unnoticed and then being left behind. There's about a one ounce weight penalty for both packs, a small price not to lose an important item. Water is life or death here, and practically absent if we go into the wilderness a mile away. With summer daytime temperatures passing 113 Fahrenheit or 45 Celsius, water is not something we can compromise on. Local convention is that each person will need to consume 4 liters per day, and we simply can't carry that much weight. Between us we have 7 liters in the initial loadout, representing 15.5 pounds out of our combined total load of 45.8 pounds. This weight will decline as we consume it, but if pressed I can quickly empty the two water bottles for an instant 4.4 pound reduction. We will need to scrounge and probably purify water in nearby urban areas, so we need to have containers to carry and boil it. We also carry life straws so we can hydrate while collecting water for later use. Your local environment and water availability will likely lead you to other choices. My research resulted in a consensus weight allowance of 15% of body weight. For me, this produced a weight budget of 28.5 pounds or 13 kilograms, and my pack weighs 28.3 pounds or 12.8 kilograms. For my wife, 15% is 17.5 pounds or 8 kilograms, and her pack is 17.4 pounds or 7.9 kilograms. This is an 11 pound or 5 kilogram reduction in combined weight from the tactical bags. The Outdoor Outfitter Co-op, REI, categorizes the weight of my bag as lightweight and that of my wife's as ultralight. We've done a mile night walk with the bags and for that short distance they're an easy carry. A real shakedown is in the works. In the planning process I weighed absolutely everything and this was a real help when I needed to compromise, accounting for both the weight and the utility of items when I needed to cut down. When it came to food, I could evaluate the calorie to weight ratio of each item and choose those with the best ratio. This really made the hassle of measuring everything well worth the effort. The food in my pack adds to 5,370 calories and my wife's pack carries 4,110 calories for a total of just under 9,500. Easily enough for 72 hours and certainly longer if needed. As a final note, the ground here is very hard and rocky and everything in the desert bites, stings, scratches or pierces. To get any comfort at all, we'll add one additional pound to the bags by fixing a sleeping pad to the exterior. Finally, here's the cute part I promised. Our other family members, two small dogs, carry their own food, taking three pounds off our loadout. They're both young and reasonably fed, so can manage 12 to 15 percent of body weight. I can't help laughing when I see these shots, but it's pretty practical. The two small packs split about two and a half pounds of dry food, two small toys, and a great little lightweight water bowl. The bowl is actually a rubber egg poacher that folds flat and is flexible enough to jam into a corner of the pack. I'm grateful to every person that took time to comment or advise on the original video. And if you're one of those people, you should know that your opinion was considered carefully when building these bags. Some of those things obviously made the weight cut and others were painful to discard. But every idea was a contribution to the planning of these bags. Frankly, we're a lot better prepared to bug in, but if the need to grab and run arises, we're prepared. So what do you think? What ideas would make this two-bag system even better? What things would need to be considered in your environment? I try to respond to every comment, so leave your thoughts below, and please save, like, and share the video with others that might like it. Don't forget to subscribe so you see the upcoming videos, and as always, be prepared and stay safe.